We're interested in solving the wave equation on a circular membrane. And so in previous videos, we used separation of variables to turn that into ordinary differential equations. And we came up with this general solution for Z, the height of the membrane uh, of the drum that we're interested in that's vibrating. So now we need some initial conditions to solve for the arbitrary constants C sub M and D sub M in our general solution. So let's just uh, give some initial conditions just for something to talk about. So suppose that at t equal to zero, the height z of the membrane is given by one minus s squared over r squared. So it's peaked in the middle and then falls off on the outside. And it has zero velocity initially. So z dot of s at all uh, for all s at t equal to zero is zero. Um, and so what this looks like, the initial condition is uh, it goes out to R, and so you have a drum that's kind of shaped roughly like that. And the question that we're interested in here is what are the C sub M's and the D sub M's, the arbitrary constants in our general solution up here? Okay, so we need to impose our initial conditions to figure that out. So first, let's just use the first initial condition. So the Z dot initial condition at s uh, and t equal to zero being zero. So we put zero is must be equal to the sum. So the j zero, nothing really happens to that because it's still a function of s. And then we take a time derivative, which brings out a factor of alpha v over r. Then c sub m, the sine becomes a cosine, and the cosine becomes a minus sine. The, that one we don't really care about because sine of zero is zero. Um, at cosine of zero, you get one. So that means you need C sub M to be zero if you really want this sum to be zero for all M. Okay, so we have to put C sub M equal to zero. So our function for Z as a function of S and T now simplifies to D sub M, the zeroth Bessel function, J zero alpha M over R S then cosine of alpha m v over r times t. So this is, doesn't look too bad. So now let's impose our other boundary condition, or our other initial condition, namely at t equal to zero, the membrane is initially stretched as one minus s squared over r squared. So one minus s squared over r squared must be equal to the value of our function at t equal to zero. So it's d sub m j zero of alpha m over r times s. So it's kind of an open question at this point, uh, is this even possible? Can you find a way to write 1 minus s squared over r squared in terms of a bunch of j zeros uh, for uh, different m's? And in fact, yes, the answer is yes. Um, so the reason is that Bessel functions are complete functions, or namely, they're complete set of functions. Uh, so if you recall this idea of orthogonality and completeness, uh, which are properties of functions that are uh, solutions to a Sturm-Louisville problem, then you can always do this for any set of complete and orthogonal functions. And so the way we do this is with a Fourier type series. In, in fact, we're going to call it a Fourier Bessel series. Namely, uh, let's say in general, for any function f of s, at least sufficiently well-behaved function f of s, um, you can write that as a sum from m equal to 1 to infinity of some coefficients times j0 of alpha m over r times s. The coefficients d sub m can be calculated according to this. So there's a j sub 1 alpha m squared. Note that's j sub 1, so that thing is not 0. The alpha sub m's are only zeros of j0. The integral from 0 to r of our function times the zeroth Bessel function times s ds. There has to be an s ds in there. OK, so for our particular function, we have f of s being 1 minus s squared over r squared. And so we can plug this into this integral. And so we have this coefficient here an integral from 0 to r, 1 minus s squared over r squared, j0 of alpha m over r s times s ds. We need to do this integral for every m in order to figure out 
what the coefficients are, d sub m. So that's pretty rough, but we can evaluate these with the computer, and then that's not too bad. The computer does all the work for us. And so if we evaluate with the computer, you find d sub 1 is about 1.108, d sub 2, negative 0 0.140, and so on and so forth. Let's just bring up the computer here. So let me call alpha sub m the alphas, the zeros, in Mathematica. d sub 1 here is the m equal to 1 um, coefficient. Before I do that, let's just plot the Bessel function, 0 and x, because that's how you call it in Mathematica. You call Bessel j of 0 uh, as a function of x. Uh, let's maybe make this range a little bit bigger, x from 0 to 5. Okay, so we can see that it's behaving kind of as we saw before. So d sub 1 is that first coefficient. It takes a while to evaluate here. d sub 2 is second coefficient. And so Mathematica returns these ugly expressions back to you, but you can numerically evaluate them. Let's set r equal to 1 and v equal to 1. And so z at t equal to 0 looks something like this if I only include the first two terms. Let's just look at an animation as a function of time of those first two terms. So as time goes on, the membrane is vibrating up and down, which is what we're seeing here. Okay, so that's what we expect for our membrane. Okay, so this is then the solution to our original problem. If we had a different set of initial conditions, then we would just have a different set of coefficients.